How's it, internet? All right, so today's deck of the week is Garuk's Wolf Pack. And uh, obviously, this is all based around the wolves in uh, the current standard for Magic the Gathering. And uh, this is a pretty potent deck. I like it. I like the wolves. Obviously, the whole theme is pretty awesome. And uh, together, they're actually, they're actually very powerful. They actually work very well off each other, much like a wolf pack would. All right, so let's check out the cards in this deck. Uh, first, we have Gilded Goose. This is there for nothing more than to actually just give us food tokens, uh, which I'll get to later as to why we need them. Um, but the other, obviously, this is a good card. And the other reason is that you can actually sacrifice a food to create mana if you are short on mana. Um, but our main reason is to create food and keep that food. Um, because we have Paradise Druid, which actually helps us add mana and uh, just helps that, that curve um, so we can get into the mid to late game, which is where this deck really takes off. Um, and obviously she's hexproof, so she um, does have a chance to not be killed by uh, uh, those red, pesky red decks with their shocks. Um, then once upon a time, also much like much like uh, Paradise Druid, also just to help us get our lands in play, as well as the cards that we need. Very powerful card. I highly suggest it for any green deck. Uh, it's so versatile. All right, so let's get to the wolf. So the first little wolf we have is the Furious Pup. Now, obviously, as you can see, he's just a zero one, but when you put him in, his mom comes and helps him, and she's a two two wolf token creature. And uh, so that's a good blocking combo. So you you know you get two creatures for one, and a very cheap card uh, for for what you get for it. But then we also have uh, the last non wolf creature in this in this deck is the Savvy Hunter. And this is again to create food tokens for us. And um, also, if you sacrifice two food, you can draw a card should you need to if your hand is looking a bit empty. Uh, but I would highly recommend keeping those food tokens as I'll explain in just a bit. Um, she, the Savvy Hunter also acts as a good blocker um, so that we can get our wolves uh, up and going. So, and then um, we have Icon of Ancestry. And uh, I recently put this card in. Um, it dawned upon me after playing my Knights deck that uh, this card would uh, be pretty good seeing that we are playing so a theme here. And this card is basically good for any theme. You know, if it's not zombies, knights, uh, wolves, um, angels, any any deck with a lot of uh, chosen named theme creatures, this thing will give you plus one, plus one for each of those creatures. So obviously this, this multiplies your creature's power. And in this case, our wolves by quite a bit of, quite a lot. And the, the extra benefit is that you can also search for your library for a creature card and then uh, put that in your hand. So this is a good uh, deck search as well as a, a buff to all your creatures, um, which we have a lot of in this deck. So I've, I've had quite a good, good, good amount of success from the Icon of Ancestry. So I quite like it, but you can replace it and we'll go through the sideboard, uh, shortly in there. You know, you can replace it. Maybe just put two of these in, uh, up to you. So, um, one of our main boys the, in the wolf pack is the Night Pack Ambusher. And this has flash, so it can be played at any time, even on your opponent's turn, you know, to block a creature and he doesn't expect it. Um, but more importantly, this gives other werewolves and wolves plus one plus one, much like the Icon of its history. So when these two are on board, um, it becomes a five five and he also buffs other wolves. So these two cards together become quite powerful together as the, as the other wolves become uh, um, quite a, a force to be reckoned with. So this is the wolf that we need all the food for as we don't have an Oko in this deck. Um, that's why I need, you know, you need the Gilded Goose, you need uh, the Savvy Hunter as food producers, because this wolf, uh, as he comes into play, he, he fights a creature that you don't control. Um, and obviously, if it's a, a creature that's, you know, it's, it's only got two, two uh, power, then, you know, it's not going to make too much of a difference. But if it's a bigger creature, like a 4-4 um, a four, four creature, then you need to use a food and you get a plus one plus one counter on this wolf, a permanent one, and then he becomes indestructible. So he will win that fight. So the only, the only fight he'll obviously lose, we well, won't lose, he won't die, but he won't kill the creature either. So it's pointless. He's obviously if the creature is more powerful in this case, if it was a five, five creature, but that is where 
Night Pack comes into play because it will buff him. It will make him a 5-5. Five five, and if you have an Icon of Ancestry, he becomes a 6-6. Six six. So he's able to take out much larger creatures thanks to these two buff cards. Um, and obviously, you know, if you have four of these in play, uh, two each, two each, he, he gets plus four, plus four. So he be immediately becomes an 8-8 eight, eight creature that can deal damage and not die to, to another 8 creature. Um, so yeah, that becomes a quite a potent combo. And... Um, that's why I found Icon of Ancestry quite an important card in this for this uh, removal uh, abilities of the Wicked Wolf. Um, then just a plain removal, a good card all around, Conclave Tribunal. We have so many creatures in our deck here. So this card, uh, we can be played quite quite early on in the game. And um, this obviously takes out any permanent. So not just, you know, it's not limited to, to creatures or planeswalkers or... Or artifacts alone it can take anything out so it's a very powerful card it looks like it's expensive but because of its convocability we are able to play this card um quite early on especially you know if you have a gilded goose out uh, it already becomes a, a three cost instead of a two cost uh, and a druid which we most likely will so then it even becomes just a two cost uh, card um for that power it's a very powerful um card to have um so i'd highly recommend keeping this and then we have Tulsimir, which is obviously also an amazing card. He's unfortunately a scout, so he doesn't buff, he doesn't benefit from these two buffs. Um, but his wolf does, certainly. And much like uh, the Wicked Wolf, he also, as the wolf comes into play, it fights another target that you don't control. And uh, so you can, so and obviously it also benefits from these, <clears throat> these buffs. So if two of these are into play, it becomes a 5-5 five, five wolf and it can take out any creature that is 5-5 five, five or less. Um, but the added benefit is that whenever another wolf comes into play, it also, Tulsimir also sends them into fight another creature that you don't control. So if your night pack comes in, even your furious pup, um, it can, this card can destroy whatever creature um, the opponent might have that using that wolf and because of your buffs, that wolf becomes much stronger and that's why i feel that this card is so much so important in this deck not only for wicked wolf but also for tulsimir and every wolf that comes into it into play because they're able to you know attack and jump and kill a creature of the opponent without them being able to do much then obviously our last our big boy the main commander the the head honcho of the wolves garuk the cursed huntsman and um as he comes into play um, and you you pay zero, or you you, you, know, you know for the yeah. You know, so you don't actually gain um, any points in him, but he creates two wolves. And if those wolves should die, then um, and you on your next round. So every wolf that dies, uh, he actually gets a counter on him. And when you remove six counters, then he uh, all creatures gain plus three, plus three, and trample. So not only are they being buffed by these two, they're gaining plus three, plus three. So your wolf pack is going to become ginormous and the 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 nice little sync um combo that he has with Tulsimir is that Tulsimir can now send as these wolves come in Tulsimir can send them into battle get them killed off and you can activate this ability your next turn so that is pretty awesome because usually um a savvy a savvy opponent will not kill those creatures cannot kill those wolves because uh, he knows that you know that's what what the result is going to be but now you're forcing him to do it um and he has no control over it and uh, then Garuk pulls out the, all the stops and uh, your wolves become insanely powerful. And what's more, they have trample. So they're going to become unstoppable um, with all the buffs on them. So that is about the deck. In terms of lands, we have um, obviously the castle of Garenbrig. And uh, that obviously is very important for us for mana. It become, you know, gives us six green mana um, for the cost of four. So we basically get two mana bonus when uh, tapping this card. Um, obviously based on the fact that we can we do have another four mana in play uh, Godless Shrine obviously just to so we do have a bit of white obviously from Conclave Tribunal and Tulsimir so that we do have to put a bit of white in here just a splash but um, the, the benefits of the cards that we get for it are, 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 are far surpass um, the little downfall of having three colors in the deck instead of only two um, I just don't have another a gold shrine, otherwise I put it in, but scoured barons. Uh, if you do have all four, you know, obviously pop them in. Um, same goes with jungle hollow. Uh, replace it with uh, an overgrown tome, or if you have it. And then blossoming sands, obviously, temple garden. Same deal. Um, 
replace it, replace temp, replace uh, blossoming sands with temple gardens if you have them, um, because they obviously act. This is this does um, surpass as a, pl a plains and a forest, which um, obviously Garenberg requires as it requires a forest in order to you know to come into play, uh, not not tapped. And then same as with Castle Lochvein, um, same thing. Um, so these so definitely replace those. But otherwise, there's nothing too too major. I've got a, I own a Lotus Field. I just got it in a booster pack, so I popped it in. It gives you an extra mana of any color, so you get three mana for tapping this. But you sacrifice two lands. But either way, you gain an extra land, um, which is important because uh, Garuk isn't cheap, and neither is Talsamir. Um, so you want to get them out ASAP. In terms of sideboard. There are a few options you can replace here. Uh, first is the Woodland Champion. So whenever another token creature comes into play, um, he gets plus one, plus one. So if we look here, so token, it's a token creature. Let me just check. No, it's just tokens. So so every food that comes into play, he also benefits from that. So he can also grow quite quite quickly. Um, every time you make a food or the Savvy Hunter attacks or blocks and he makes a food and this is in play, he's going to get plus one, plus one. So um, he grows pretty quickly, and uh, Garuk's wolves are also tokens, so they he can also benefit from, benefit from that. Um, the ambusher, one thing I forget is if you don't uh, attack, or I mean if you don't cast a spell in your turn, he also creates uh, a two-two wolf token creature, which again the um, is going to be buffed by by not only the night pack and the icon ancestry, but the woodland champion will also um, get a plus one plus one counter. Uh, Assassin's Trophy. This is a removal, obviously. I, I like this card. The only thing to me is that we want to try to get ahead of ma the mana curve uh, before our opponent, and this thing always kind of puts us back, and that's why I rather put in Conclave Tribunal. And while this is, you know, this is only a two mana cost, as I said, we have uh, we have seven cheap creatures here, as well as the Ferocious Pup. Um, we're going to have a lot of creatures up front very early in the game. So this card is definitely going to come down to, uh, you know, a two cost card, which is equivalent to this. And the fact is that, um, you know, we're not giving the, the opponent one land, you know, to, to come back at us with down the line. So I prefer Conclave, uh, but yeah, it's up to you. You can, you know, either way that's a removal, you just need it in the game. Uh, Leyline Prowler, this again has Death Touch and Lifelink and again gives us man mana. In other decks, this is great, but I feel that we um, already have enough uh, mana gain from Paradise Druid and Once Upon a Time, um, we don't really need too much more. And he doesn't, he's, he's unfortunately not a wolf, so he's not going to benefit from our icon and our night pack ambusher, the plus one, plus one counters. So I just kind of left him out. I, th yeah, I love the card. Otherwise, uh, obviously the death touch is very important for protection, but we have, you know, we've got wolves coming in. Um, so I feel that he can stay out on the sideboard. Um, the saddle, uh, wolf, wolf rider saddle. Uh, this also creates a 2-2 a wolf creature token. Again, that's going to benefit uh, the woodland champion. And then uh, you attach the saddle to it and the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one and can't be blocked by more than one creature. So again, that's a, it's a pretty good card um, and it costs three to equip. Um, so yeah, they, if you, you can, you know, even remove one of these icons or if you don't have one of the cards in the deck, especially these two, you know, the obviously rares. Then you can pop this in it's it's a very good card to have in the deck um adds another wolf wolves benefit from icon wolves benefit from nightback ambusher um the golgari fine broker this again um returns a target permanent card from your hand to your graveyard uh, i it's a good card but um i don't feel we need to return anything because we have so many creatures they are just going to you know snowball and uh, i don't think we really return anything because it's not that kind of deck um, casualties of war against a again a removal but it's very expensive at um what two four six cost um which is the same as garuk so you can choose you know obviously it's a very potent card when it comes into play it can remove basically anything from the opponent uh so yeah possibility for removal i'd also you know put it in the sideboard if you're having trouble with your opponent in a, a three a three match game then uh yeah pop it in and then obviously I've got two more Garuks here just in case. Um, I just happened to draw to draw a lot of them in boosters. I got quite lucky. Uh, so yeah, you can also you know pop them back in if you if you don't want any of these. Or maybe even replace the savvy hunter if you you know if you think your mana curve is, is fast enough. Pop him back in, and because uh, people are gonna are gonna gun for him quickly, 
So, you know, always nice to have some backups. Then the last card is the Great Henge. Uh, it's it's a good card. I just feel that, uh, I guess I guess with Icon Ancestry, I, before I had it in here, and um, I just feel that the Wolves weren't strong enough um, to kind of make benefit of this card uh, soon enough. But um, with Icon, you know, obviously they are, they get some buffs. So the Great Henge can also play a good role in this. And um, whenever a non-token creature, which is, you know, which we have a lot of, comes to the battlefield, it gets plus one, plus one. And um, you gain two life and you gain two mana from this. So this will really help your mana curve, um, you know, to get to get Garuk out uh, very quickly, as well as maybe Tulsimir. And... Um, so the way this works is if the spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So uh, currently X is 7, and if we say have a Night Pack Ambusher out, X becomes 7 minus 4, so it becomes 3 plus the 2. So it's still a 5 cost cost card. So that's why I felt um, it didn't, I didn't really ever get to play it as often as I would like. Um, and it's better with, with, with creature cards that are, you know, you get these big creatures like um, the Hydra's, and the the beanstalk giant, you know, where they come in and they seven they seven seven creatures, and um, you know, then a new comes a two cost card. Um, so I don't know. I I liked it. I I'm, I'm that's why it's sideboarded. I want to play it. Maybe I might, might just throw a few things around. Um, you know, maybe replace it with it once upon a time. I don't know. At the moment, this this is the deck. So let's play a few games and see how it goes. All right, guys. So let's play our first game of the Wolf Pack. Garuk's Wolf Pack. Alright, Frostburn, let's see what you got. Can you face up to the Wolf Pack? Alright, so we have a Once Upon a Time, which is amazing. Furious Pup, we, um, our lands aren't looking too good, but um, we do have a green here, so hopefully this as well as Once Upon a Time will smooth things out for us. So let's see, let's see. Okay, so we're going to be playing that first, followed up by that, and then um, we'll see if we can maybe get a forest out of him. Otherwise, one of the druids or uh, our goose will also be top picks. Okay, so I'm going to play once upon a time. Okay, so there's our goose. Um, yeah, let's go for let's go for the goose. Create some food early on for our wicked wolf, and then um, pop this guy in there. Right, here we go. white deck looks like a lifelink deck. Yeah, so there's our night pack. Pop the swamp in, and our gilded goose. Okay, our food token. So next round we'll be able to play a Furious Pup. And then we'll be able to play Concave quite easily when he puts, puts a Johnny out. Or Pride Mate, should I say. So I'm actually going to put this out first. Um, so we can create as much food as we can early on while he doesn't have big creatures out. Uh, the furious pup, ferocious pup, sorry, must just uh, chill out for now. He'll come in soon. Okay, he gains four life. Okay, so okay, so it's a green and white deck. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put the The ambusher art reason being that i want to put tulsimir in and um and then attack then then that wolf will have a plus one plus one and it'll be a four four instead of a three three and then i can take out this uh, centaur Okay, so let's take out the centaur. What does this one do? Okay, so we want to try and not kill that one. 
Okay, order pay. Sacrifice of food. Balsamia. Boom, you see a 4-4. Four, four. Cool. Okay, destroyed. Thanks for coming. Um, and you can see now Conclave is so cheap. So let's actually do that. Auto pay. And then pop him in so that he doesn't create little tokens that are going to annoy us. You see that uh, the combo of, of all these creatures uh, as well as the conclave is very powerful. That's why I'd rather have this in than the the other removal. can't remember the name now. Um, that actually gives them back land. What is it? Assassin's Trophy. That, that's the name. Okay. So our wicked wolf can come in. It can also destroy... See, so now this Wicked Wolf is going to be 4-4. Four, four. We don't need to buff it with food. And we can destroy this. And he gets to destroy another creature, you see. So we can do... Um, so the Wicked Wolf is now going to attack. So let's submit zero. I don't want him to die. You see, you could, we could essentially attack twice with him, um, but we don't want to do that, because otherwise he's going to die. Uh, so just be careful of that. And then we're going to attack with create a food token. So if I had a food token at that stage, then um, I could have buffed him and made him indestructible, gave him a plus one, plus one, then we could have taken uh, more of these guys out, but that wasn't the case. But either way, it was a good round for us. Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> there's not much you can do. The wolves are so powerful when you get that combo off. And look, that was turn... I think that was turn 4 or 5. And we were able to pull out that kind of combo. Alright guys, so let's play another game of Garuk's Wolf Pack. Okay guys, so here's our next game. Let's see, we have a, a nice amount of land, Icon of Ancestry, no small creatures unfortunately, but we have Conclave and, and Wicked. Um, so let's stick with this for now. Um, hopefully our smaller creatures will come in to help us out. Um, and obviously help Conclave again. Right, so that's perfect. There is our Druid. That'll help us a lot. And then we obviously have Castle once we have four lands. Uh, things start snowballing in our favor uh, but this red and i see so many of these decks now it's become the the favorite of the of the month i see them uh, at, le at least every third game i play against this deck all right so we have an ambusher we have a wicked okay this is perfect Okay, let's play this rather. So I don't want to sacrifice my, my druid just, just yet. Mm. Okay, let's add another land in there. That we have four. And then, um, yeah, then we can definitely pull Garuk out pretty quickly. Especially with two castles now. Okay. What else? What else? Okay. Um, attack us. No blocks. In the turn. Okay. We can pop that out. So you know we have six land basically at our disposal. Um... Okay, so I'm going to put the knife pack out again.
Should have probably done Ancestry, because uh, the wolf pack, or the ambusher, he can kill pretty easy, whereas uh, Icon um, is less likely. So I want to buff, I want to buff Tulsmia's wolf to a 4-4, so we can kill this guy off and uh, survive the battle, like we did in the last game. Okay, so the reason we couldn't play Garuk with, uh, even though we have six mana, we needed one uh, black mana. Um, because this obviously only gives you six uh, forest green mana. So, even though we have enough, and the same with Tulsimir, can't play them because we need, uh, we need just one more mana of a different color, and then we should be able to. Okay, no attack. Don't want him zapping the druid. Although it's weird because I mean yeah, is our extra mana. Um ah, what is this? Yeah, it's basically the same as our wicked wolf and our Tulsimir. Okay, you see, so that's why I said better put to put the tribunal in. Uh, into tapped rather. Let's put this out. Wolf. And then no attack. Okay, so now our wicked wolf and our Tulsimir's wolf is are buffed. Um, so we can do some damage with them. Can't be blocked by creature tokens. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so how much mana? One, two, three, four. We might have enough to play this and tribunal. Okay, so let's. I'm gonna play this rather. Okay, four, four. Let's destroy this guy okay godless shrine into tapped and then uh, no attack let's just chill out all right cool now we're in control again for now so now We are lost control. Same card that did it to us last time. Unfortunately, but at least we have the wolf still in there. I'm gonna get rid of him. Hopefully he doesn't have a counter. Yeah. Alright, so he's just got all the cards in hand that he needs. Okay, so let's pull Garuk out. Oh, wait, let's actually kill this guy off. I'm quite sick of him. Let's kill him off. And then... Uh, attack him. Pay him back. Right, right. These, these creatures are gone. Now we've got some defense up, uh, we can pull Garuk out, and we can even conclave him, um, we have enough mana. What is this? What is this long text of Wall of Text? At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Until your next uh, turn, amplif amplifier, base damage becomes twice, the, twice that the card's power and its base toughness becomes twice the card's toughness. Put it in reveal, okay. Um, I think I should just, yeah, okay, so let's, um, let's conclave this guy. Okay. 
Because this is going to happen to us every upkeep, so... We don't want that to happen. Okay, removed. Um, put our wolves out. A mini wolf. And his mama. And they're going to get plus one, plus one each. He's great. Come on, dude. Just accept it. Okay. Alright, so now we set up for Garuk. Uh, and basically, I think it's if it's when... Create two black black wolf tokens and when this creature dies. Okay, so these creatures, these wolves have to die, not any wolf. Which is important. Okay, we've hit him nicely. That was a good eight damage to him. Okay. Clan Crusher, remove a plus one plus one counter from creature you control. Uh clan crusher deals two damage to any target. Okay. He's not going to do too much damage to us because he can only deal two damage at a time because he has to be tapped. Okay. Let's uh, pull Garuk out now. Now is a good time. Good time as ever. You ever listen to the crickets? That's my kind of music. Okay. And then we might as well conclave this guy. Um, just to annoy him even further. Okay, let's pay with this one. Pay with this one. Pay with this one. And pay with this one. Okay, we can't, so let's pay with this one. Okay, he, yeah, he quit. Nothing you can do. Another victory for the wolves. Alright guys, uh, another game with the wolf pack. Let's see how it goes this time. Alright, so we have a lot of lands and uh, we have a goose. We have a savvy hunter, this is a good start. Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not angry about this hand. So let's keep it. Okay, and a druid just to help us out even further. Okay. So I'm gonna pay two life to bring our our goose out sooner. We get the ball rolling. ASAP. We don't want to be left behind. Um, so we can do our castle next. And then we can do our savvy hunter after that. Castle and then and then Savvy Hunter over here. No, actually like that. Okay. So this is a forest, yes. Okay, it's fine. And then I'll... Okay, so we have a Surveil deck here. Uh, no attack. Alright, alright. Okay, we're going to have to get rid of this guy, so I'm going to probably use them. Oh, it's not the... Not the Wicked Wolf. Unfortunately, okay. so, this is one of his core cards. We definitely have to get rid of this. Um, so we can just block the damage, though. Like I said, the goose isn't too important for us, like it is with uh, an Oko deck. Um, it's literally just for food for our wicked wolf. Okay, um, we can put the castle in, I guess. Although, no, we need we need a white mana for Tulsimir. All right, all right. So now we can kill this. We can kill this pesky. Uh, okay, let's not do that just yet. Do a savvy hunter. Because I don't want to tap all these. I don't want to get rid of the food. 
Um, we will be able to get him next time. Okay, so we have these two lands. Okay, so it's five land and then one, two, three, four, which one we're going to be putting out. And then five, so we'll definitely be able to... Okay, now there's quite a few options here. Okay, so I don't think it's the deck I was thinking of. It's not a surveillance deck. I think it just looks like a flying deck in general. So that Imperian uh, Eagle is far more dangerous to us now. Uh, so we're going to have to remove him rather. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to stop these guys. Okay. Right, it's starting to hurt. Let's see what we can do to mend it. Okay, put the castle in. Now we can play Tulsimir. Okay. We can fight this guy. just need another wicked wolf and then it'll definitely uh, knock him down a, a notch here but let's create a food token while we add it or our wicked wolf to get some plus one plus ones and um, to deal some damage to him as well as uh, create that food token okay So the Executioner, I think, is the next important card here to get rid of. Uh, because he's got an ability, pay three, exile target creature and exile him. Okay. Draw two cards, one less for each flying creature. Yeah, so there's definitely a flying deck. We really need Ambusher now. Not Ambusher, uh, Wicked Wolf. But good that we got rid of that uh, Imperian Eagle. Okay. At least we can block him again with our Gilded Goose. But uh, I guess it doesn't matter who we block. Resolve, yes. Get out the way. Yeah, so that's one thing this deck doesn't really have is, is reach. No, I don't want to do that. Just want to block. That's all I want to do. Yeah. Okay. Right. So the thing is that it, what he's forgetting here is that uh, when we retaliate attack, it's uh, it hits pretty hard. Okay. So we can put our ambush out. Let's gain one life. Uh, yes, resolve. So remember, we've still got two food tokens. And we can create another one now. Um, okay, so when he comes into play, obviously he's going to be able to attack. So let us kill. Let us kill this executioner. See, now is a good time because he has to pay to, to exile it. Let's get rid of it becomes a problem for us okay nothing else we can do then let's attack 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 um, create a nice little food token for us that we can obviously also use to uh, buff our life again And we're hitting him pretty hard here. He needs to stand back as a blocker now. Okay, draw two cards, it's fine. We need another wolf to come out. That'll be great. 
a Garouk would be amazing. Um, you know, that'll be two wolves that we can just automatically send into, send into to kill these little pesky flying creatures. So in a way, Talsumia acts as a um, a reach creature. You know, technically speaking, because he can kill off even though I mean, the wolf isn't technically a reach, it doesn't have reach or flying. It, it's able to kill a, a flying creature. So, so Talsumia is um, it's quite an important card. Um, so it's hard not having four of them in the deck. Okay, he just keeps attacking. Which is, uh, it's fine for me. Okay. Block this. And Okay, nice move. But not enough. Okay, so we definitely need to gain one life here. Okay. Put another savvy hunt hunter out. Fortunately, not a wolf. There we go. Conceded. Gonna get hit by three, uh, seven. Yeah, he would die. I mean, he's only got 10 health. So another victory for the wolves, three in a row. So as you guys, as as you can see, guys, this this pack is amazing. I'm glad I could show you kind of all the angles of the of the deck from Garuk to. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to Garuk's trample, but um, as you can see. That's, you'll probably not get there um, that often either. Um, the most important part is the mid the mid core of this game, the, where you're able to buff these wolves and you, using Talsimir, send them in to kill creatures uh, that are annoying you, as well as uh, having Tribunal uh, Conclave in there that can uh, also remove uh, some pesky um, other enchants or, or artifacts or even playing walkers that are that are in your opponent's deck. Uh, that's it guys, that's it for the Garruk's Wolf Pack. I, I love this deck, I I'm definitely going to try play it more often. And uh, that's it from me. Like and subscribe. See you in the next deck of the week. This is Ozark. Adios.